Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. My name is Rich. I'm here with Ricky. Ricky, hi. Hey, how are you? Very good. We had very nice beach day yesterday. We did. Look at my tan. I look at Mitch's tan. Wow, uh, bronze god. You, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me roll the intro first. <laughs> So Ricky, uh, we went. We went. Oh, you know what? I think I need to turn up your mic a little bit. Give me a second. Talk while I'm gone. Um, wait. Did I just keep talking over the intro? Is this is this what happens? Just entertaining people over the intro. Well, yeah, we went to the beach. It's called Maruki Beach. Very nice place. No jellyfish. Had a swell time with everyone. Barbecue. One of my buddies from Canada is visiting. He's in the other room, actually. Yeah, just chilling. Just chilling chilling like a villain. We asked him to be on the podcast. He's like, you want to be on the podcast? He's like, I'll just sit here. I'm fine. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I don't do social media. As he makes an Instagram account. He's making an Instagram account? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, how do I say this nicely? You cannot connect with the young, friendly ladies of the country if you don't have an Instagram account. Very true. Pro tip from this old guy with a, Awesome shirt. This, this shirt is so cool. This is a pretty cool shirt, to be honest. It was. A, it was. A, it was. A, it says. If you guys can't see this, it says, "U.S. drinking team." Look, mine. Mine's Canadian. Uh, you're identity. sweaty. Man. You're sweaty. I was so sweaty. It's been sweltering. So let's. Uh, let's see this. So we went to the beach. It was fun. We had a fun day. At the beach. Hey, look at that. So there's this place called Marikahama, and uh, it's pretty cool. This is a recording of all of my stories on Instagram. <laughs> Look at me. That's Ricky. Dude, he's asking in the sun. He's having a great time. We had uh, these tents out and a DJ. And this guy organized it right there, Shingo. He's kind of fun. We had a massive barbecue. It was very hot. I wasn't able to drink because I had to drive. That's Yohei was cooking, doing a great job cooking. Uh, this is Keegan. Keegan, hello. I said, think of something fun to say. And he says, hello. <laughs> Enjoying a beer and sea. Yeah, this there you go. The best. There we go. I don't know. It was fun. It was fun. It was, it was hot. It was like 37 degrees. But it was good. Like 37 degrees without a shirt at the beach. That's how you need to do it. There's this is how you spend summer. There they are. That's how you do it. That guy had what not slept knows. in like 40 hours at that point. <laughs> Something ridiculous. I asked you if you were waterproof and then splashed you. And you're like, okay. <laughs> There's his Viking funeral. That was fun. It was just so hot though. It was just so hot. Oh, and then afterwards we went and got drunk. And that's the place that we got drunk at. And then and then at the end, you sang Numa Numa. Numa Numa Numa. Numa yeah. Heck yeah. We know how to party it up like it's 2004. Or I don't know when that song came out. Is that how that song came out? Oh, nah, it's like 2008. Really? Jeez. Uh, actually, let's talk about something serious. Let's get to the news. It's kind of news. So this happened. I'm going to actually play sound on my... What oh. tragedy... Uh, what tragedy are we covering today well there's a lot to cover today not so much but we are gonna hear so basically this happened uh last week on thursday i used to work here this is where i used to work i used to be in that room this is my old job <laughs> so we had an earthquake last week there's kkb i used to work there this is oh, he got the construction helmet right no, away. No, so the news people they have to. This is uh, Miyazaki, where the where the earthquake was. Yeah, you have to get on your your helmet all quick and stuff, and then get on TV with your helmet. It's it's quite it's quite it's quite the active scene in the newsroom when there's an earthquake. That's pretty cool, actually. So they all put on their hat, their helmets, and they all scramble. So wait, let's pause this. This is where this the earthquake was over here, over here, and we are over here next to this minus five thing. So that's where the earthquake was. That's where we were. And it's very cool to see them in action because that's like first responders of information. It's oh, really no, important that their they... Their job is super important. Actually, here, let me show you something. You might not have caught this, but this, this right here, th these are called Joho camera, which means information cameras. And they're placed all over the local area and they all have a hard wire that comes back to the uh, newsroom. And so this is what the news looks at to get instantaneous uh, information when there's a natural disaster. Incredible. And well, so uninterruptible, like, stream. yeah, like a feed where we are. 
uh, in Kagoshima, we have the longest prefecture in, Kago- in Japan. So the island chains go way out. So what they used to use is uh, microwave beams for the closer islands and then satellites for the farther away islands. Wow. I think they still do. Not really sure about that. But these Joho cameras are, cr- they have like, they have like $100,000 zoom lenses on them and they're all remote. So this is kind of, this is going to be, a, this is going to sound a little creepy, but about six years ago, I was sitting there in the newsroom and what they were trying to do is during Obon, which is Obon right now, it's where all the Japanese people go to pay homage to their, is that the right word? To respect to their ancestors mm-hmm. at the graves and stuff. Um, Cause their ancestors are come back on little cucumber horses or eggplant horses. Right. Carriages, vegetable carriages horses whatever so they wanted to get a shot of all the Japanese people going because there's like a hill in Kagoshima with all these graves on it and they wanted to get a shot of this this hill with all these people cleaning the graves and putting out flowers and everything and so the camera guy just approximated where he thought the hill was and just went max zoom on the camera so we're watching this live. this wasn't aired but we're watching this live in the in the newsroom and it just so happened to hit a, a window of an apartment and I could tell you, I could like have a complete view of the people in the living room. Like, I, like clearly could see this. And this was like 16, 17 kilometers away. Something crazy like that. Wow. And I was thinking, I was like, if there was a perv in the newsroom, he would have un, like if your windows were open or if you had your curtains open, it didn't matter what story you're on. Cause the, the Joho cameras are way up in, Joho means information. They're way up in the air. So you would just like, you could perv it up. I was thinking that the whole time. I was like, this is kind of scary. Just wait till it actually becomes news. And you know. Yeah, it's probably going to come. News. We'll, we'll get we'll a slap it. on the wrist or we'll something. Yeah, get a sl- they'll give him a gold star. Like, <laughs> creative new way to be a perv. Uh, anyway, so we where were you doing the earthquake? What were you doing? Uh, well, we were, at, uh, we were at the school. Yeah. And fortunately, it was in between classes. So they're, all the kids had already gone home by that point. Yeah, so they, they, they were outside of the, uh, the the classroom, which was good. Yeah, so in total, we were maybe like 10 people, like seven so adults and three kids. This, this shot right here, again, it's a Joho camera. This is one of their cameras that they have throughout the city. And yeah, we started, the alarms went on. We started to feel the shaking. And immediately, one of the, the staff, you know, the VP, she like took action and like, boss it yeah, up Kyoga, it was she, awesome she took she took her hundreds of years of being a school ch- child in japan and having to race under their desks and stuff that just kicked in yeah and it was immediate like calm let's put out the information let's get everybody out of here and we were evacuated within and like hulk hogan a minute. and ricky picked up a kid like Whoop, let's go <laughs> i just picked up a kid it was good so where i was i you guys are on the third floor of a pretty strongly built building i was i'm on the eighth floor i was at, at my home office at the time and i was on the eighth floor of my relatively new mansion tower and i opened the window to look outside because like every time there's a big earthquake i always want to look at the volcano to make sure it's not doing something stupid hmm. so i like open my window to look at the volcano. <laughs> yeah no, i'm serious because every now and then when there's an earthquake like sakura Jima will do like a little like an eruption or something and um <clears throat> anyway so I'm in the eighth floor and I look out and Sakurajima is on the horizon. So it's like, it's like this. Sakurajima is a volcano in the local area. And it's just like swaying back and forth like this. My whole tower was swaying back and forth. And I was just getting vertigo like you wouldn't believe. I was like, whoa. And then, and then my, my wine glasses in my kitchen were going, kong, 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 because they're like, you know, suspended. Well, of course. Like, yeah. And the news keeps saying that this, is, this might be like a precursor to a much larger earthquake along the the main fault in japan panic everybody uh this Run is actually, for the hills this is actually a pretty funny thing so this guy says see said i'm from the news and he's like let me, let me see let me, uh, uh, i want to get the, the is audience. he trying to rescue the shochu bottles so like the the news guy goes up to this 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 poor man <laughs> which means like it's ex- exactly what you're looking at dude Oh, this is funny. It's like, Namaho, so if you've ever gotten it. Yeah, it's just great. <laughs> but anyway, we, we no, I don't think there were any injuries. Uh, let me not quote that. Uh, I don't think there were any uh, deaths or anything like that. At least 18, uh, eight people. It says eight people here. Uh, injured? Dead, it says. But Wow. And more injured. But this is a Were they like very, in telephone lines or something? Like One home in Kagoshima is said to have collapsed, but no injuries were reported. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I don't remember them. The Japanese news: nine people, uh, nine people, but most injuries are minor. Hmm. Injured nine people. So I don't think that's right. I think that's wrong. 
I think that was just a no major damage reported. There were no reports. Yeah, I don't think there was. A, I don't think that's right. There was a TikToker. Don't get your news from TikTok, guys. There was a TikToker <laughs> that was saying like there was an uh, earthquake in Japan. Lots of tourists are canceling their plans, and there was like nine hundred dead from it. I was like, I don't think anybody died from it. What? The the worst thing that happened for, for my friend was just like delayed trains. Yeah, delayed trains, right? List of earthquakes in Japan. Let's go all the way down. <laughs> August 8th, zero dead. So no people died. So you're wrong, ABC. See, don't get your news from ABC either. Fuck you, ABC. Dude, did you see that thing where Trump went on the into the Chicago? Uh, he, he For whatever reason, Trump was like, I'm going to go to the Black Reporters Conference in Chicago, get on the stage with four, four, three or four black women, very smart, very powerful black women. And he's like, this is going to be a good thing for me. Well, yeah, but, Trump's a brother, isn't he? Dude, the, he, I mean, he's, he's orange black. It's not right. Orange is the new black. That's a TV show. <laughs> 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 the first five seconds of this, of this conference, this first woman, she was like, she was like, you could tell she was been waiting for this moment for her whole fucking like the last 10 years. And like her first question was so aggressive and so to the point, I was like, get him, get him. <laughs> but yeah, that was a catastrophe. And he was like, and he answered in the most boomer way possible. He was like, never have I had such a rude question before. He just kept talking about how he, they're rude instead of like answering the question. And the question wasn't even that rude. If you want to be president, you got to put on your big boy pants and answer questions sometimes. Uh, let's well, see what other things do we want to talk about. Oh, so the United States, right? So talking about stupid things in America. So the United States, they protest uh, attending the uh, the ceremony of the Nagasaki Peace Memorial because Israel wasn't invited. Huh. So the Nagasaki Peace Memorial that happens every year, right? There's one in Hiroshima, one in Nagasaki. The one in Hiroshima. Israel was there and like the mayor or the governor of Hiroshima started talking about current wars, but like just alluding to them and like the news like zooms up on the, on the ambassador to Israel. And I was just like, okay, that's a little bit on the head. And then anyway, then so for the, um, for the uh, one in Nagasaki, they, they didn't get invited. And so like a bunch of first world countries, America, UK, Australia dropped out and they didn't attend. And so it's kind of funny because uh, we are the ones that dropped the bomb as I wear the USA drinking team shirt, we're the ones that dropped the bomb. So like, you should probably go to the peace memorial. Like don't doesn't use matter that. what. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the place to protest. <laughs> I don't feel, but yeah. So like top comment I read, it's like, it's shameful that the U S insulted the victims by not attending. I guess uh, Israel holds more power and money over the uh, U S than Japan does. So, yeah. And then as a fallout of that, uh, U S ambassador to Japan, Rom Emanuel, uh, planning to leave the post in November. If you've never have, if you've never read the history of this man, go to his Wikipedia page. What has he done? Everything. He, this guy is a horrible, horrible person. Is and he, he a is war missing criminal? a finger? Huh? Is he a war criminal? He might as well be. He's he's like, dude, this guy. So he's from the Obama administration era, and just go to his Wikipedia. Go go look up. Uh, go look him up. And he is just, uh, he's just terrible. Everything about him is terrible. I don't know why he's still employed, but go, he's just look at his Wikipedia. It's great. Uh, I want to add it to the list. What other things do we want to talk about? Oh, okay. So this is kind of funny. This is funny. Uh, well, he injured people, so it's not that funny, but it's still kind of funny. So this is called Chinese national arrested after suicide bid results in explosion that injures himself and seven others. He blew himself up. Uh, kind of. Let's just read this one. Okay. So a male Chinese national whose suicide attempt resulting in an explosion at his residence in Kawa Kawaguchi City last month that injured himself and eight others has been arrested, police said. On Thursday, police arrested Sen, uh, Sen Own, 30, 44, of obstruction of justice and other offenses, including assaulting a police officer. Blah, 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 blah. So, it, so at around 8.30 p.m. on July 18th, own filled his residence located on the third floor of his apartment building with natural gas in an apparent attempt to asphyxiate himself. But as I came to my senses, I opened the window and lit a cigarette. <laughs> Let's look at this guy. Not his guys. full senses. Let's look at this man. There he goes. That's that's him right there. He wanted to go out with a bang. So the top, the <laughs> top, top Reddit comment on this one is like, he's like obviously not laughing my ass off. <laughs> this is very comical though. It's like, 
This is like what you see in cartoons. This right? sounds like straight out of a comedy is the next best com <laughs> comment. Exactly. It's just... Huh. I, I wanted to kill myself, but then I backed out, had a cigarette, almost killed myself. <laughs> oh, whatever. I don't know. So uh, so there was a... Uh, getting back to the earthquake, I forgot about this. There was a mega quake warning that they issued again that, right. that there might be a big one that's coming. Um so you should always have supplies and in, in, in a in a evacuation pouch and stuff, which I don't have anymore because I forgot to renew it. Can we shit on more uh, foreign people? So Japanese yeah. in first foreign guests disappear without paying. That was super sad. I mean, one, don't be shit, guys. Be good, but at the same time, like, how could they not? trace them in any way you know tucked away in the mountains of the nagano prefecture town in, in takayama uh looks uh has, there's this nice little ryokan japanese in uh you can see the photos here beep, beep. i think there's more oh, maybe 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 not nope nope that's it okay that's it um and so they had some foreign people it was like uh, it's, it says it's all they so mm, 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 mm. So they welcome their very first guests from overseas, uh, with members of the staff brushing up on their English in order to cordially greet them when they arrive. However, the staff never got to say goodbye because the travelers appear to have suddenly left without going through the checkup procedure and also without paying for the room. Wow. That really sucks, though. The two foreigners who had checked on on Friday, August 2nd, with reservations to stay for two nights, the pair went out on Saturday morning, but they hadn't returned to the inn by late that night. And the employees became concerned and went to check their room, discovering that they had taken all their luggage with them and left. <clears throat> Our entire staff was looking forward to having people from over to see, see what a wonderful place Takayama is, and we feel so betrayed and sad. Fuck you guys. Whoever did this, can we find these fuckers? Like, these people need to fuck these guys. Yeah, don't ruin it for everybody. So, so there is a requirement. So this is this is the kind of kind of sad part. So, so there's a requirement for all people who want to stay at hotels in Japan to provide their passport and give them a copy. Yeah. Okay. But apparently, this inn was unaware of this requirement, and also, unlike many other hotels in Japan, does not require prepayment in the time of chicken. So they didn't know to take their ID, or even like a credit card number, something. It's like a traditional inn, like owned by like a small family. So, you know. You, you could see this happening. There's literally um, Rakuten Travel offers a service for ryokans that when you go to their website, you can book something. You can book an in on Rakuten Travel. And what they then do is they take this digital booking and fax it to the ryokans so that they can book it in their piece of paper book things, you know, pen and paper mm -hmm. i'm i'm totally serious i'm not fucking i'm, I'm not, it makes sense yeah. checks out i'm not surprised anymore by japan <laughs> i'm not surprised anymore by japan here's a good here's a good story japan to allow joint custody of children after divorce survey investigates public attitudes i've been following this a little bit this is actually really good news an upcoming legal change uh will finally allow divorcing couples to seek joint custody of their children in japan and opinions are mixed like for, even just for like japanese couples that has been such like a hassle mm -hmm. Like no one ever really ends up happy. And if they do, it's well, it, I mean, if they work something out, it's great, but there's no like legal backing to it. And there's properly. also the woman always has so much power over the situation. And if the, it turns out that the, the mom is actually the, the quote unquote bad guy in the divorce, she will just wreak havoc on your life. And there's been a couple of cha uh, situations where uh, Japanese women have run away with the baby, claimed bullshit, uh, domestic vi violence charges against their uh, foreign husband. And then the foreign husband is just fucked. There's nothing yep. they can do. It's like I don't know what happened with, with that French guy, but there was a that guy that was like hunger scare, yeah, hunger yeah. protest, yeah, hunger protesting in Tokyo. So well, hopefully I mean, the spell's he's getting his way. News. So uh, in May, it was decided that Japan will introduce the right to joint uh, parental custody by 2026 as an option in the case of divorce, and that's it. Good, good for fucking Japan for coming up to the modern times mm -hmm. in one way, and not others. Um, I don't think there's anything else that we need to talk about. Uh, oh, wait, there's one thing uh, here. So in Fukuoka, there's the queen beetle, and it goes from, uh, let's see, it goes from Kyushu to where in... Is this a train? No, no, no. This is the boat. It's a boat. Yeah, it goes from Hakata Port to Busan in South Korea. And it says, on... Okay, it says on the ninth of on the on the ninth of I guess 
uh, August. JRQ Zero announced that it would spend, suspend the operation of the high-speed ferry Queen Beetle connecting Hakata Port and Busan in South Korea from the 13th to, for the time being. Uh, this is due to the discovery of fraud, always fraud, by JR Kyushu Ferry, a subsidiary that operates the ferry regarding water ingress into the hole. So basically, hmm. it's probably not safe, maybe. And that girl that you're talking about, Kyoka, took this ship to Busan before. Damn. I mean, do you think they would have to learn something about security after that whole incident that happened like a few years ago? Which one's that? The the ferry sinking in oh. Korea. I actually, I want to show you the Queen Beetle. The Queen Beetle is actually really cool uh, when it doesn't sink, if it's not sinking. When it's not a submarine? Well, whoa. Technically, all boats can be submarines. Convertibles. They <laughs> just only do it once. So here, this is the Queen Beetle. It's actually pretty cool. It's like, I forgot how long it takes. It takes like less than a day to, to do it. And you get like a really cool. Whoa. Is it one of those? Uh, snap. What are they called? The ones that like kind of skirt over the water. Hydrofoil. A hydrofoil? Hydrofoil. In Japanese, they're called topi. But yeah. Uh, yeah, these are cool. Look, it's like, it's all decked out. Like you can have a party like doo -doo 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 on the Queen Beetle. And your... there's rooms too. Like you can get a, a your like own little room. And it's hella cheap, apparently. It's like super reasonably priced. Hmm. Right? That, look, that looks very nice. Right? So this Luxury. Is, yeah, very luxurious time. And I forgot how long it takes, but it's, I'll look it up and when I stop playing this video. But I think it's, it's like you can just do it because it, it, it's just right there. It's really close. Right? And so you go to Pisan, you go like have fun. Uh, Kyoka really had a good time. But yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right? Let's ride the Queen Beetle. Let's do it. Well, we have to go to... Once they're done with this security fraud thing. Yeah, make water sure it leaking. doesn't sink. Yeah. Oh, look, what is that? Oh, that's fun. Is that for kids? That kind of looks dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you see, like, um, like uh, playgrounds for, like, kids from, like, the 80s and the 70s, and it kind of looks like a torture zone? That's how you toughen them up. That's what I was saying. That's that I don't think is a bad thing. Oh look, this is where the water ingress happens here. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh, that's just a fun word, water ingress. So let's see, how long does it take to do this? Three hours and forty minutes. It's two hundred and thirteen kilometers. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Pretty good. I mean I could I could be on a luxury a luxury cruise for three hours and thirty minutes. That'd be kinda of cool. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Look at his engines. Oh, I learned how to do something. Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, anyway. All right, Rick, we got to go get drunk. Let's do it. I mean, be very responsible. But, uh, by the way, the show is late because we went to the ocean. <laughs> we had a fun time at the beach. I'm sorry, everybody. It's my fault. I was like, we could do the show before or after the ocean. I was like, after the ocean, please. Yeah. You know, it's like 6.30 p.m. You know what time I woke up today? 5 p.m. 4.30 p.m. Close enough. Yeah. Let's go get drunk. We're going to go enjoy a few, imbibe in a few beverages responsibly. It's going to be God, great. Right. Always uh, drink responsibly. Oh, dude, I think you're a little bit out of focus. Look at that. <gasps> I'm fuzzy. Oh, my God. You're a little bit out of focus on the show. Oh, well, that's what you get for not paying attention. Where is the focal point? How are you out of focus when you're sitting next to me and the camera's between us? Incredible. Are you part of this universe? I'm wide. Have we, we, ha we have to go see uh, Deadpool. We haven't seen it yet. Sweet. Multiverse stuff. Mo and probably butt stuff. There's always butt stuff. Oh, and, and multiversal butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, <laughs> Bye everybody. <laughs> All right.